Welcome to Sundry Sports for Monday, June 15th, beginning with Cowboys Wire, brought to you by USA Today. 2021 mock draft sends Cowboys replacements for Jarwin and Clinton Dix. I read about this yesterday. I didn't click on it, but I don't really care about your mock draft, honestly. Um, that's there. Futurama, why Cowboys are regarded as having dynasty-capable talent. There's no doubt plenty of reasons to be excited to be a Cowboys fan entering the 2020 season. During the offseason, they revamped the coaching staff. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Except for the damper of the whole quarterback debacle. A Blake Jarwin breakout could fuel Cowboys offense into stratosphere. Uh Uh-huh. We do need a suitable uh, replacement for Witten. The offense for the Dallas Cowboys carried the team in 2019, finishing first in the NFL in yards a game. That's good to know. Try Flamingo. Should an eight-pack of blades really cost $32? We don't think so. That one is pink, so I'm assuming it's for women. I guess I get that flamingos are pink, but why would you name it Flamingo and make it pink if it wasn't for women? Cowboys news. Demarcus Lawrence working. Dorrance Armstrong faces pivotal year. Long game. Lot of sore. Yes, that was yesterday. Cowboys news. Van Der Esch, Jalen, Connor Williams need to step up. Yep. What, Sean Lee is playing, though. He's still playing, right? Richard Sherman, blah, blah, blah. How long are they going to be talking about this? Cowboys news. Tyron's final star season. Best and worst Dallas' off season. Cowboys News, Randy Gregory's Rocky Road. Yes, that was been on here before. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Let's read this. Why Cowboys are regarded as having dynasty-capable talent. There's no doubt plenty of reasons to be excited to be a Cowboys fan entering the 2020 season. During the offseason, they revamped the coaching staff after parting ways with Jason Garrett, added key veterans during free agency, and had an excellent draft in April. Just recently, Gary Davenport of Bleacher Report ranked the seven best teams set up for the future heading into the new season, and the Cowboys came in at number four. Dallas ranked second in the NFC behind the San Francisco 49ers. The Kansas City Chiefs and Baltimore Ravens held down the top two spots, respectively. And that would be in the AFC. It isn't hard to see why the Cowboys landed on this list when examining their moves over the last several months. It started with the signing of former All-Pro defensive tackle Gerald McCoy, who spent 2019 with the Carolina Panthers and will now take over duties at the 3-Tech as an upgrade over the departed Malik Collins. His teammate from a year ago, Dontari Poe, would join shortly after to play alongside him at the 1-Tech, Haha, <laughs> Clinton Dix, a savvy veteran safety who played his best ball under new Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy in Green Bay, was added as an upgrade to Jeff Heath, who signed with the Las Vegas Raiders. I hope he's an upgrade. I liked Jeff Heath. They also added former All-Pro defensive end Alden Smith, who was just recently conditionally reinstated after a five-year hiatus. <clears throat> in the draft... The Cowboys saw a massive infusion of promising young talent. It all started with the selection of wide receiver C.D. Lamb at 17, who, along with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup, gave the Cowboys one of the most dangerous receiving cores in the league. In the second round, Trayvon Diggs was taken at number 51, a long and physical corner with excellent ball skills, who could be CB1 in 2020. In the third round, they added defensive tackle Neville Gallimar, a 300-pound wrecking ball that will add depth to the Cowboys' interior pass rush, playing both the 1-tech and 3-tech. The fourth round saw the Cowboys double up on young soldiers. First, they took another ball-hawking corner in Reggie Robinson, who will be in the mix with <clears throat> who will be in the mix for playing time early. Also, they took center Tyler Bayadas out of Wisconsin, who can compete with Joe Looney and Connor McGovern to take over starving, starting, starving, starving duties, starting duties with the retirement of Travis Frederick. Yeah. <clears throat> In the fifth round, the Cowboys may have gotten their best value for any draft pick by selecting edge rusher Bradley Anai and two-time first-team two first all-pack-12 performer out of 
Utah. A two time. A technician with a history of violent tackles, and I will be heavy in the mix for playing time opposite Demarcus Lawrence. Finally, in the seventh round, the Cowboys added more competition to the backup quarterback role by taking Ben Din Dinucci out of James Madison. As people start to take in Dinucci's film, more and more are becoming intrigued at his ceiling. Hmm. <clears throat> Cowboys quarterback Ben Dinucci is really interesting. I'm writing him up this weekend and finding high amounts of intrigue in his skill set. His ball location of the games I am charting is A to A-plus stuff. Lots of underneath and quick game, but talk about ball on between the numbers over and over again. Of course, all of this new talent is being added to a roster that was already loaded. Quarterback Dak Prescott is coming off a career season with 4,902 yards and 30 touchdowns. Even when he plays well, we don't get anywhere, though. Ezekiel Elliott finished fourth in rushing, second in all-purpose yards, and tied for first in 100-yard games for all running backs last season. Amari Cooper set career highs in yards, 1,189, Touchdowns, 8, and yards per catch, 15.1. A year ago, Zach Martin and Tyron Smith each made the Pro Bowl and Lyle Collins was snubbed, grading out as one of the best right tackles in the league in 2019. <clears throat> that takes care of the offense, but defensively, the Cowboys aren't too shabby either. Demarcus Lawrence, despite his sack numbers taking a dip, was one of the better edge rushers in the league last season. Linebacker Jalen Smith took a step back last year, but did manage to finish tied for sixth in the league with 142 tackles. Alongside him will be Leighton Van Der Esch, who's fully recovered from neck surgery, and Sean Lee, who filled in nicely for Van Der Esch and registered also 90 tackles last season. The secondary is the weakness of the roster, as there hasn't been anyone who has already proven greatness. Xavier Woods will move to strong safety with the addition of Clinton Dix. The rest, Chidabe Aosia, Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown will all battle it out for snaps and a future with the club. Back to the defensive line, Randy Gregory will more than likely be reinstated with the new CBA no longer punishing players for positive marijuana tests. The Cowboys are young and talented and could very well be good for the foreseeable future.